Thank you so much, Cody, for that amazing, amazing uh, opportunity to record this interview with you, to be together and just to discuss how mindset can influence the business and vice versa, how business can influence the mindset as well. Um, I remember that we uh, met each other less than a month ago, I believe, approximately like that. Yeah. And yeah, not, uh, long, not long ago. Yeah, yeah. And it was very interesting that I came to that networking group just one event before you, and then came you. And uh, from like after your second meeting, we just get together. And from the very first meeting, we realized that uh, why not to record an, an interview? Because we have so many things together in common and we have so many um topics that and values that we can share and that we think can help entrepreneurs really change their lives and minds and businesses so um can you please tell me how long have you been in business as a business coach and um what happened in your life that you decided to be the one yeah thanks for having me on I appreciate the opportunity to talk with you. I do think we have a lot in common and that we can offer business owners. I've been a business coach for three years in January. So I was certified at on January 2020, which was probably the worst time that you could start a business right before COVID. So I tried to get my business off the ground and it was hard through COVID, but we made it through. So about three years and then prior to that, I was a business owner. I owned a landscape construction landscape company that started in 2011. And it was a business that was supposed to get me through my university degree. So I had started university and in that first summer, I was looking for work. And my wife had the idea to start our own business because we had experience in that industry. And so she thought, why not start our own? And I actually said, I don't want to. That's a lot of work. I, I don't have any business experience. Somehow she convinced me. And we started, it was called Greenleaf, Greenleaf Lawnscapes. And that snowballed into a full-time business. I had to stop going to school because I couldn't do school full-time and the business. So we were operating with seven employees. I had a manager. We were doing commercial snow removal, uh, landscape projects, lawn care, pesticide. And it was great. It was a learning experience, a lot of ups and downs. Through that, about eight or nine years of running the company, I gained an appreciation for small business. I gained an appreciation for leadership and working with people and creativity and building. And I learned that I wanted to continue to be involved in that space, even if I wasn't gonna continue landscaping because it wasn't my passion. I didn't start the landscape company because that's what I always wanted to do. It was just supposed to get me through school. But through that, I really learned the value of what business owners do. And so when I shut the business down, I went back to school and got my degree, I thought, what am I going to do with my degree? I don't want to go work for a bank. I don't want to necessarily work for anyone. I've owned my own business and I love working with business owners and leadership. So I wanted to stay in that world. And that's when I learned about consulting through my research and consulting. I learned about coaching, which I was not really aware of at the time. And I thought, I like the idea of working with small business owners as a business coach. I'm, I'm helping the person I was just a few years ago, take control of their business, make a profit, live the life they want, create this business to serve their customers. And that just made the most sense. So when I, when I learned about that, I thought I'm, I'm going to research that path. So I found an association that certifies business coaches, um, but they had to have had experience before. So they weren't willing to just certify anyone. They wanted you to have some leadership and ownership experience and education. So I went with them. They're called the PBCA, Professional Business Coaches Association of Canada. And that started my journey as a business coach. So that's what I've been doing since. Wonderful, wonderful. Is there any difference between uh, business coach and business consultant? Yes, yeah, so a consultant 
and a coach, the best analogy that I can think of is a consultant holds the fishing rod in their hand and they pull the fish in and they just hand you the fish. A business coach is standing next to you with you doing the fishing and we're coaching you along the way. So the same way a football coach would be on the sidelines Very nice. we're helping, we're, we're part of the team, but we're not running the play. We're not throwing the ball. We're not catching the ball. We're on the sidelines. And that's how you would look at as a coach. We don't do the work. We help you do your work. Mm -hmm. And you train them, do their work as well. So afterwards, they will be able to do it themselves. Right. In the end, if the engagement or when the engagement ends, we wanted to have empowered them. Mm -hmm. So they now have the ability to go forward with more tools and resources. If they can't do that, then I wasn't really coaching them. I, I think consulting is great and there's a place for it. And sometimes I take off the coaching hat and I put on the consulting hat. But most of the time I'm wearing the coaching hat. But you're right. In the end, we're empowering them so that they have the skills to continue on with it. Okay, nice. Um, do you believe that everyone should try to have their own business? Yes and no. Why? The reason I say yes is because of the incredible learning experience that you get from running a business. School can't teach it to you. Books can't teach it to you. Those are good resources and I think you should use them but nothing teaches you like running a business teaches you how to work with clients, how to manage your emotions, how to deal with people and lead, how to prioritize, how to strategize, how to create something and solve problems. I mean, you can kind of get the idea of that in the classroom, but when you're thrown out into the world and you're doing it, on your own and it's all up to you it's a completely different situation i want everyone to have experienced that just a little bit I, i wish everyone could have a week or a few months or a year of business ownership just so they could come out of it and go okay i get what that is about and that everywhere you go there's businesses now i'm driving down the road and there's a milkshake shop and there's a clothing store and a mattress store and a grocery store and a optometrist and it changes your perspective on your community and the economy so for that reason i wish everyone had a little taste of business ownership but the reason i say no is because it isn't for everybody it is very hard and you have to dig really deep sometimes what i also think is that some people are visionaries and some people are really good at supporting visionaries. And I think it's kind of the yin and the yang. There's two sides of a coin. The visionaries need people that can support them, right? We need leaders and we need managers. If everyone was a manager, we would struggle. Mm -hmm. If everyone was a visionary, we would also struggle. So I think, I think more people could be business owners than they think. Right? I think it's in more of us than we really realize, but I don't know if everyone has the brain or the wiring to mm -hmm. want to do it. And you have to want to do it because if you don't want to do it, then you're just going to struggle and, and quit. So it just depends on the person. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why like, I think that um, coming back to a question, should everyone try to get their own business? I believe yes. But will they really run it and have a profit? I don't know. But to try, I believe everyone should do that. And uh, coming back to what you say, they should want to do that. And uh, like I created some sort of formula. If a person wants to be very happy, wants to do what they really want and succeed in life, they need to have three components, three main ones. First one is believe that you can do. Second one is want to do that, to achieve it. And the third one is to be in the position of observer. So not take anything personal, but know that, okay, if nothing works, it doesn't mean that I need to stop. It means that I need to adjust somehow 
and see how I can do it differently a bit. Fourth one is definitely, that is what we discussed on our first meeting is execute, is do. Consistently take actions, consistently take actions. Even if they are giving you zero result right now, it doesn't mean that they will give zero result in the future, but like, again, you need to understand whether they will not give you any result at all, or they will have something in the future. So you can be okay with it, not frustrated that, oh my goodness, I didn't lose any kilograms be because I went to a gym two times. You will not do that, right? Because you need to have some time before you will get a result. Consistency, perseverance, being diligent. And I liked what you said in being adaptable, like changing to the situation. That may be the most important skill that you have as an entrepreneur is the ability to adjust and adapt because business environments change, your industry is going to change, your perspective is going to change, client needs are going to change, but you're also going to have a tool that you thought was going to work and realize, oh, I got a hammer when I need a screwdriver or a drill and you have to learn to adjust. So if I, I really like that point that you made, if, if you can't adjust, and take some heat and take some criticism and do some internal auditing to change how you operate in the world, it's gonna be a lot harder than it. It's already hard enough. So learn to adjust and adapt, I like that. Mm -hmm. I also like to think about this process as a whole that it is not hard, it's challenging, and it is definitely worth going through because all the words we are saying even though that is hard or easy, only we decide whether that is hard or easy. For some people making 2K a month, that is hard. But for a different person making uh, 10K a month is easy, right? Mm -hmm. So we are by ourselves decide what is easy and hard for us. And I'm very eager to point to the very big value of words of what we really want to pay attention to because when we say it is hard it becomes really hard to us we believe in that but when we say that is challenging that is interesting that is exciting that creates a whole different energy to start doing things because mm -hmm. so if that using... is hard you can stop and you cannot even start doing things right and if there is only one thing that our audience can grab from this very video is um, if you just change your perspective that it is hard and you won't be able to do that, you will start doing things because you can think of that it is challenging, it is interesting, it is fascinating whether I will be able to do that or not. And with that energy, with that interest, it's more likely that you will take action. Thought that it is hard and we are already tired from our work, from our families, from everything that we have. And if we even and if we have an idea that the starting business is hard, we may really like not even think about doing that because it is it is out of our energy capacity right now. <laughs> I agree that the the perspective is important and entrepreneurship is all about risk right you're trying to determine if there's an roi if there's a return on investment for what you're trying to put forward so i th i think there's a there's a spectrum and a balance between it's too hard and i can't do it and i'm not willing to challenge myself but also n not being realistic enough to know that there are challenges ahead that you have to mitigate the risk because if you tell someone who's an aspiring business owner, it's easy, you're going to make it like just, you know, go for it. And, you know, good things happen. They're going to come back a few years later and be like, you told me this was easy. I'm uh, this is hard. I've never done anything this hard in my life. And, and you go, well, but like you said, change that perspective of it's not just hard, it's a challenge. And that's, I think, what life is all about. That's what humans are. That's why we have such a big brain. It's not to just sit in a field and eat grass all day and sleep. Mm -hmm. It's to have a problem in front of us and come up with a solution. And that's the foundation of an entrepreneur and a business owner. So yeah. I like that you say, look at it, look at it differently. It's a challenge, but be excited for the challenge. And it, it energizes you instead of 
demotivates and, and shuts you down. That's a good perspective to have. I'm a business coach. I work with small business owners. It sounds like you do a little bit too, but you also are a life coach. We have some overlap in, in what we do, and it's a lot about the mindset. What are the primary challenges faced with your clients, and when do people know it's the right time to work with someone like yourself? Sometimes people don't even know what they need from you, mm-hmm. right? They're, they're not necessarily asking you yeah. for something. They're just saying, I'm struggling with this. Mm-hmm. So what are those challenges that you see in clients most often? And when would you tell someone is the right time to look for that help? Because I find in business, there, there are several months, if not years late getting help. Yeah. Like they, they, could, have, they could have come a lot sooner and, and gotten help, but they yeah. wait for it to be a crisis sometimes. Yeah. Do you find that with life coaching as well? That it's not until mm. everything is horrible that they come for help? That is a very good question because um, initial answer for me will be every single person need a coach, not in every chapter of their life, but if they struggle, if they start having more questions rather than answers, if they realize that they have much more emotions like sadness, like stress, all emotions that my clients may have that pulls them down that drains their um, energy that is the right moment to see what is happening because i have that model which i called m fraud which is event meaning illusion feeling reaction outcome desire every single thing is connected in every situation that my client is facing and uh, emotions are usually the not triggers but it is a very great factor for a person to understand whether everything is okay with you. So if your primary emotions are those ones that help you being happy, everything is amazing, you can be without a coach. If you doubt whether your happiness is more than 50% for your last week, that is a high chance that you have some thoughts in your head that you can work on. I would say that there are 100% of people that have so many different thoughts that they can start working on. But the main thing is, do they really bother you right now? Or you can still live with them. If you understand that they bother me so, so much that I really can get rid of them or try to work on them so they will not come to me, that is the right time. The bad true is that they will never stop coming to you. Thoughts will be all the time in your head, but you can train your muscle in your head to think about them differently, to not believe in them, so they will not bother you that much. And uh, um, again, um, what are the main requests? What are the main challenges that people come to me? Again, that model that I told you about, it is the model when you see that uh, we have um, events in our lives. These are just facts. They are neutral. They don't mean anything. But only we create in our head the meaning about a thought. That is a fact. That is a pink bottle. Some person can think that, oh, that is a pink bottle that is only for girls. I hate this bottle. Another person can think, oh, I love this color so much. I love this bottle a lot. The bottle is the same, but two different people have two different meanings about that bottle. And that is the reason when emotions come. That is the main trigger for emotion to come. So first person who hates this bottle will feel frustration, disappointment with that bottle because he doesn't like it. Um, Maybe some anger for that bottle, I don't know. But another person who like it, he will feel joy and happiness. And from emotion, we behave differently as well. From anger, we can do only things that will be disturbing us and others. From love, joy, and happiness, we can do only positive actions. We can react only in a way that help us and others. So um, as soon as person understand that those thoughts doesn't help me, and they can't read of them, and they cannot get rid of them. That is the main reason when people can come to me and they will understand what is going on. Usually those thoughts are, I am not good enough, 
I don't understand what to do. I don't know what I love. I don't know what to focus on right now. I am not lucky. And that is why I don't even want to try something new. And all those thoughts usually lead us to procrastination, to not doing what we love, not doing what we promise other people to do. And uh, that just in 90% of cases lead a person to stay with the same level of life, so not moving anywhere. Yeah. What, I want to clarify what I'm hearing you say. Yeah, sure. Are your clients typically backward looking, kind of downward looking, and you're trying to shift and say, hey, look up, look ahead, look in the future. You have potential. You have goals that you can achieve. You have a lot you can offer the world. And you are getting in your own way. Yeah. And we need to get you out of the way so that you can go and fulfill your calling more fully. Is that kind of what I'm hearing? You're trying to get people to, to live up to their full potential. Definitely. Because my mission is I want to transform 10,000 people's minds so they will live, work, and study in the place of their dreams. In order for them to go to that place, they need to understand what is that place look like. What do they really want in life? Once they understand that, they can realize, okay, what are the steps? Once they understand the steps, they will bounce from the barriers in their mind. They will realize what thoughts stop them from doing what they really want. And what I think you're doing, and this is where we have a lot of overlap is, you know, I'm dealing with a business owner, you're dealing with someone not nest, they could be a business owner, but they might not be, they could just be a mom or dad or a teenager. But the principle is the same where we're saying, where do you want to go? Yes, definitely. Why do you want to go there? And what is the canyon between where you are and where you're going? What's the bridge? How do we build that bridge? What does that strategy look like? And then we help them day by day, week by week, month by month as an accountability partner to say, Definitely. what have, what have you done? Yeah. Yes. And I, I think it whittles down to, and maybe you could um, clarify this on your end, helping them stay focused. What we live in a world that's so easily distracted. We're so easily distracted, whether it's uh, family. I mean, I have, I have a good distraction. I have four young kids. That's amazing. Right? And sometimes I can distract me from work, but maybe work's distracting me from my kids. But there's <laughs> a lot of reasons to be distracted, whether it's social media, wanting to be with friends, wanting to go on vacation, whether it's money, work, family, like we have to balance it all. And I think the pro one of the primary services that I provide is helping them know exactly where they want to go and then stay focused on it. Definitely. Don't get distracted. Learn to say no to good things sometimes so that you can stay focused on the, yeah. on the most important. Do you feel that you do the same thing? Yeah. And because our first sessions with my clients are realize our clear goal. So, so many people are run after the goals that they saw from other person that that person has Mercedes. That person has such a big house and they want the same house. Then I start to dig deeper. Why? What it will change in your life? Why do you want this very car? Why mm -hmm. do you want this very house? Why is that important to you? What your life will look like? What yourself, what you will look like when you will be at this point? And then they start to realize, I don't really want it. It's okay for me to be at that level. I think I want to do more some different things. I want to build my own brand. Maybe I want to run a volunteer project because that gives them much more meaning in life rather than go after Mercedes, home, money. And sure. uh, we all know, and I definitely know that you will agree with that. Once we reach to the goal of money or of any other material goals, we very quickly lose interest in life. We don't understand what next. Yeah, what's next? Where's mm -hmm. the finish line? Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, first two sessions are like, first one is very big one, very deep dive, realizing what we want, how we want, 
what person will be when we will achieve it. And second one, we understand, like we start decomposing it. So we first like expand the inner belief, inner dream kid inside of that very client. And then we come to reality back. We narrow down what the 10 main steps we need to do. And then we have that roadmap with 10 main steps and we will go through one step to another in order to make sure that, okay, right now I finished the first one. I need to jump to a sixth one because that is the priority right now. Then I will jump to a third one. And um, I think that I am a pro in building that calendar narrow down to what he or she needs to do right now. Mm -hmm. What are those things that will lead you to success, to the life you want? And uh, at the same time, I really against those things that like turn all good stuff down or tell all the time no to friends or to parties or to like that rest that you have. Because if we hate every single run every single morning that we have to do exercises in order to prepare ourselves to a marathon we will hate our life in general and we will not enjoy the marathon itself if we hate every single step that we build in order to gain that much money we won't enjoy that much money it's like the same um when we live only for a birthday when we live only for getting that day and being fully in that day, that day passed. That is just one day out of 365. And we will never really enjoy the life. And I am a big, big fan of the quote, journey before a destination. Mm -hmm. And if person hates every single moment with the journey that he or she has, it will never come to the happy life. Yeah, you have to enjoy the process. And it doesn't mean... The process is always enjoyable, but you enjoy the process of growth and learning and your brain expanding, your wisdom growing. Yeah. It makes me think of uh, people like Kobe Bryant or Michael Jordan who, you know, we see them really excel on the court and in the big game, but all of those types of athletes will tell you they put in the work in the background and they enjoy doing it. Yeah. They come they come early, they leave late. Yes. They work really hard and and then that will lead to the wins, but they also enjoy the process that leads up to it. Definitely. I believe and I love this idea that 70% what we do, it should be what we love. And 30% will be anyhow things that we have to do. Things that we need to do discipline we i don't know any person who loves paperwork i don't know any person who like to like do some organizational things there are people yeah but like they're like in every single business in every single process in every single activity that you think it is your dream life there will be 30 percent of things that you have to do anyhow at least yeah yeah and I believe that is ideal goal to really thrive and to aim to that ratio. Yeah, I like that. Going off kind of what you were saying, you work with clients to say, hey, I want this house or I want this car, or, I want this life. How important is it for you to have been where your clients want to go? Mm -hmm. Is it yeah. important? Mm -hmm. Um, as you can see, I am not in the $10 million house right now. As you can probably think that I don't have that much money as my clients sometimes thrive to have. But the main thing for us is to know how to get there in our mind, with our thoughts. As a coach for my clients, I all the time know that everything that that person can imagine in their head is possible mm. so if they want 10 million bucks per month as a salary or as a income from business i will never stop them thinking about that because um i love that 
quote, and I love that phrase that me with my client right now set a goal to reach out to Mars. So we want to get from Earth to Mars. Statistics show that in 90% of cases, we will not reach out to Mars. But in 100% of cases, we will be among the stars. Mm. Yeah. The goal is to fly from the point that you have right now in life to reach out to move forward to start moving because sometimes in point a we we realize what we want to have in point b we want to have money we move from point a to point a20 in point a20 we we may realize that we don't want money we actually want to build something else we actually want to build a family so every single time person is dreaming about point b it is all the time his or her perception of what he or she thinks will bring them happiness every single person who dreams about business money car house a relationship is all about happiness so we have our own perspective for some person this bottle with the clean water might be happiness somewhere in Africa. They will be happy to get that bottle of water right now. For some people, being invited to this conversation and to be out there in the YouTube will be happiness. But for some people, only having a huge house, big money is happiness. And we ourselves, only we are defining what happiness means for us. Mm -hmm. I know how to be happy. I know how to live a happy life and I know how to stay there. Not just jump there and jump back, but I know how to be there consistently. I know how to every single day, okay, not every single, but 90% of the days, I know how to stay in calm joy. I know how to stay in that energy level that no matter what happened before i know that i will jump to a call i will have an interview and i will be fully present over here right now and it will give my full attention i will give my fully 100 percent. it doesn't mean what was five minutes before that call it doesn't mean what tasks i have at work but i 100 percent know that i can manage my thoughts and they will change my energy level. They will change my feelings. Mm -hmm. Feelings is what we need. Do I know how to feel on a ton million dollar? Oh, yes. Have I got those money? Not yet. <laughs> but the main thing I think for me is stay motivated and stay in that zone of interest. Wake up each day and know that, oh my goodness, it is such a wonderful day ahead of me. I love to jump into it. I want and I thrive to go there, to be there and to be my best self. That is what I am here to teach, to coach my clients to. Because so many of them just doesn't have purpose. They don't that's have where purpose. The, that, that's the struggle is yeah. they, they wake up and they don't feel mm -hmm. that. They don't yeah. want to feel that. They don't know how, right? There's someone saying, you know, there's opportunity and life's exciting. And they're like, nope, I'm, I'm depressed and life is hard and I lost my job or someone died. And yes, and uh, you're telling me to just change my perspective. And, mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's true that there's always something to be grateful for. And there's always opportunity ahead. We have to dig down deep sometimes yeah. and, and also show up for other people. Yes. You know, we don't, I think we forget how many people we influence or who are relying on us. And that when we don't show up the way we could, we're in a way letting other people down and we're not helping lift them up out of their morning where they're depressed and don't want to get up and they're struggling because of the same things. But, you know, we got to link arms sometimes and pull each other up. Definitely. What do you do when a client come to you and tell, I'm stressed out, 
I don't want to do anything right now. My business is shit and I don't want to work on it anymore. What do you do with them? Have you ever come up with that case? Yes, fairly often. And a lot of business owners feel that way more than people want to realize business owners are very stressed especially because of covid um, business is hard as it is but covid added a new layer of stresses so what i typically do is i would ask them a lot of questions and i would start with questions like tell me why you started the business and they'll usually say something like i had this good idea i was super excited about this product and or I, I learned this in school and I just had a passion for it. And I said, okay, where did that passion go? Why don't you have the same fire now that you did five years ago or 10 years ago? What happened? Let's, let's run through those years. And then they'll usually explain, you know, something happened or I lost my drive along the way. What I see a lot is the business side takes over the passion in other words, if you're a plumber, an electrician, or a, a baker, you know, you love baking, you love serving your clients, but now you have to manage cash. Mm -hmm. And you have a client that's not happy and gave you a one star review on Google. Mm -hmm. And you have to stay late when your employees are going home. You have to build that website. You have to pay those GST payments. And all this stuff starts piling on. You're like, all I wanted to do was bake pastries and bake pies. And I don't get to enjoy that anymore. Mm -hmm. So we get to a point like that. And then I'll say, okay, do you still want to bake pies? Do you still want to enjoy your business? You started it for a reason. And you probably wanted more freedom than working for someone. You probably wanted more time in your life than the nine to five. And you probably wanted to have your hands on the wheel and create and solve problems and help your clients. Do you want that to go away? No. Okay, you still wanna go after it? Yes, okay. And then we go back to what me and you just, just discussed. This is where you are, this is where you need to be. Let's talk about a game plan. Let's, one of my favorite activities to do in this, at this point in the conversation is what I call a brain dump. Hmm. I want you to tell me everything that comes to your mind that could help solve your issues right now or your biggest challenge. So if this is your biggest challenge, staring you in the face, it keeps you up at night. Tell me everything that you would do to overcome it. Whether you had a ton of money or resources or not, just anything that comes to your mind. And so then they'll list and I say, give me like 20 things. Yep. And it could be, I need to, I need a loan. I need more money. I need more staff. Um, I need more time in the day. I need to go to bed. I need to change my diet. I need to prioritize my time, whatever it is, list it. And then I say, okay, pick the top five that would have the most impact. And they pick the top five and I say, okay, pick one of those five, pick the top one. What would have the most impact out of those five? Okay. They pick that one and I say, okay, what can you do? in the next seven days about this strategy that you have. Let's make some tactics and come up with something to do in the next seven or 14 days, depending when we meet again. What are you gonna do? What do you need to do? And all that does is give them one more step, right? You, you don't climb Mount Everest in one bound, in one leap, it's a, it's a little step at a time. So I give my clients hope by breaking down their challenge into actionable steps. I want them to walk away with something that they can do right away. And then they can come back to me a week later. And sometimes they go, I didn't do it. And I say, okay, how come? And that brings another layer of challenges, right? Well, I really wanted to do this, but this got in the way. Okay, how come that got in the way? What do we need to do to make sure that doesn't get in the way again? We're gonna do this. And then the next week, okay, I did it this week because I got this out of the way. Awesome. So we're still having solved your overall challenge. We got these strategies and tactics. Let's keep, and we just keep chipping away at it. And so sometimes that takes two weeks. Sometimes it takes two months. Um, but climbing that mountain, you know, it's, it's a step at a time. So what I, 
to answer your question in short, if someone comes to me and they say, I'm overwhelmed, I don't want to do this, I say, take a breath. You can get through it. We just have to make a strategy for you to get through. But where the power comes in is they create it themselves. If I sit there and say, this is what I know you should do, they're going to be like, yeah, you don't know me. You don't know my situation. I'm not telling you everything. Yep. Right? Where when you put the power in their hands and you say, what's your challenge? What are the strategies? What are you going to do? Then when I follow up with them a week later, I'm following up with them on what they said they wanted to do. Mm -hmm. You told me this was important. You told me you wanted to overcome this challenge. Why didn't you do it? Okay. But if I if it's reversed, right? And I say, you told me this was your challenge. I gave you this prescription. Why didn't you do it? And they're like, no, I didn't. That wasn't me. I didn't mm -hmm. think it was important. So that's how I would help a client in that situation and, and give them hope. Yeah, definitely. And I would 99.9% .9 of words say the same. I have the same process, the same work. I just remind them about a big idea that I then I understand what 20 or 10 main steps, what is the priority five, what is priority one, what is the tactics for the next seven days for the priority one, and then go. A hundred percent. And uh, I love that. Like in the beginning, I wanted to tell you, why don't he or she just didn't delegate this thing? Like, why didn't they, if they want to bake, why they don't go there and find a person who will get in charge of their cash, of their banking things, of their like GTS or like taxes things? Why not? But then again, they need to tell what they want to do. They, they need to think about the solutions themselves. But we are there to maybe help them with some more ideas. Do you think that may help? Do you think that may help? And then they think, yeah, maybe. And only then we can really ask them, have you done this? No, why not? And uh, in my work, like why I said in the previous several seconds that only 99.9, .9, because for me, every time I ask why you didn't do that, why you didn't do what we discussed with you doing, I know that it, it is 100% thoughts. 100% what has happened is just thoughts. Thoughts about that fact. Yes, there might be some more crucial things come along and priorities changed. But at the same time, why didn't you do that in a different time? Right? Why didn't you start doing that? And then they tell me, because I thought it doesn't really matter right now, because I was overwhelmed with a different thing. Okay, what we need to do so that won't happen any other time. So you will still keep your focus on, even if there are so many priorities coming. And uh, then we like dive deeper into coaching, into um, mind shifting, into mind transformation, into journaling a lot. That is like the best thing that I all, all the time do with clients is journaling because without mm -hmm. realization, what is there in your head right now, you won't be able to shift it, to transform it to something else, to something what will really help you. I agree. I yeah. agree with the, uh, the mindset in the sense that if there's anything that I want my clients to understand, it's that they're in charge. Mm -hmm. Take control. That's my tagline. Take control of and enjoy your business. But that's implying that you are you are doing it. You have to be intentional. You know, a lot of stuff might have happened that's not your fault. Government may have shut your business down, or may have had a, a rough upbringing, or you know, we are victims to circumstances in some ways. But if we live as a victim all the time you know, we don't get anywhere. And so for me, that's the mind shift. You're in charge of you. And if you want to get somewhere, you got to move your feet. I can't move your feet for you. So take extreme ownership of your situation, whether the situation you're in is your fault or not. It's still your responsibility to do something about it. Yeah. And that starts up here with the, yeah. with your brain and your psychology and 
And that can be hard to get people to think that way, right? It doesn't happen mm. overnight. Yeah. Uh, sometimes they just need to take little steps in that ownership. But our brains are plastic. They can, they can change, right? We have all these neural networks and pathways and highways that, and often, and maybe you're uh, conscious of this as well, that they're, they're always driving on the same pathway all the time. And we're trying to clients each and every day. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we're trying to to pave those new roads. Um, I I do an exercise with if I do a speaking engagement or something, and I'm talking about the importance of if you want to do something different, you got to do something different. And so I'll say, fold your arms. And I'll say, okay, fold your arms again. Say, okay, now everyone, fold your arms the opposite way. So if you're if you're right. And people are like, oh, dang it. Mm -hmm. They like don't know how to do it. Or if you do yeah. it with your hands. Yes, yes. And then say, okay, shift it over this way and do it. It's awkward, right? Yes, it is. And it's because we have muscle memory and we have yeah. uh, pathways in our brain. We just know how to do things. And often what me and you are helping our clients do is do what's awkward. Like I can't even do it right now. If I... I can't do it. <laughs> right and we want them to get com we want them to get comfortable with what's uncomfortable so that they can create new habits and new systems because we get comfortable doing what we know how to do but we sometimes don't realize that that isn't the right way to do it or there's better ways to do it a hundred percent and pathways new ones we can't build within one day within one month we need to have some time and we yeah. need to have patience to believe that those pathways will lead us to a different result, will lead us to a different life that we want. Going through the same pathways, we will never be in a different place. Yeah. We only need to do some to change something first and only then see what is going on over there. That is fascinating to see how many things we have in common and how many things we are connecting and we are telling our clients to. And it is like, I feel that the truth is the same, but we are going to believe that that is working. We are going to trust that person that is telling us to do that and follow his or her instructions. Because if we come here, if we pay that person to be here and to change our lives, I believe one of the main struggles is when we are discussing with the person that we are going to do that. But then they came back to me and tell, I didn't do that and I don't think so that is working and I don't know what to do. And uh, then like what the main thing I am showing them is, okay, do you see that you are still going on the same pathway? I am showing you a new one, but you don't believe that that is working. And you keep going on the same way. And your responsibility, that is completely up to you to choose. I am here to suggest, but that is only up to you to choose what you actually will do. If you want a different result, we are going to change the pathway at some point. Mm -hmm. If you keep doing the same thing that you do, you can do that. But I am not here to go there any longer with you. Because you know that that doesn't work. Our brains are a lot like nature. If you if you were in a helicopter looking down at a river system, the water is always taking the path of least resistance. Yes. And we are wired to do that. Mm -hmm. We want to do that. And there's benefit to doing that, right? Efficiency and productivity. It's, we, we want and should be taking the path of least resistance. The problem is we need to be on the right path. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have to change that path and mm -hmm. we get comfortable doing the wrong things, but we're fighting against that all the time. We're fighting against wanting to binge on Netflix and, you know, sleep in or go drink and instead of go to bed early, get up early, eat balanced meals exercise build networking groups build good solid friendships uh, meditate journal uh, have a spiritual side have a emotional side that you're strengthening and all of that's going against the grain we're like 
changing the trajectory of that river and it's really hard. Yep. But what I found is that the if we stick to it, it gets easier, right? It's hard for the first month, two months, three months to build those new habits. But once you get the habit going, then you've built a new path of least resistance. Mm-hmm. It's just that initial, you know, it's awkward to, you have to think about it. But once you do it enough times, you don't have to think about it anymore. Yeah. And, and that's where you got to your bad habit in the first place, right? You trained yourself to get into the bad habit by doing something over and over and over. You just got to train yourself to do it a different way. Mm-hmm. But there's there's nothing wrong with wanting to do things the easy way. I think that's wise, but we just want to make sure that it's not the wrong thing. Yeah. And uh, it is again coming back to the book Atomic Habits by James Clear that we've discussed mm-hmm. with you before and highly recommend it to everyone and the link for that will be in the description under this video. We discussed why people should try to run a business. Why is that great to have a business? Because you have freedom, you have money, you have time you want, you have opportunity to be with your family. The moments you want, not the moments that you have from your work. Um, but if we take in a bit step back and let's imagine that person come to you and ask Cody, I want to start my own business. I work right now in a company. I have no idea what to start with. And I have no idea about business. I have no idea like what business I want to build. What are the first three main steps or main questions that you would ask that person so he or she will get some clarification what to start with? That's a good question. And a lot of people have been going there as a result of COVID. A lot of people do want to start their own freelance business or something similar. What I would suggest to them is be very clear on what it is that you want to do. So if you want to start a business, but you don't know what to start, don't do anything yet. Be very clear on what solution you're providing. So find a problem, come up with a solution for it. There may already be solutions for it. Come up with a better one or a different one, right? There's a lot of burger joints make a different burger but after you can clarify that there's a need then you need to go out there there's usually government help uh, lots of programs if you're just starting out uh, so like in my local town here in lethbridge and they have similar things up in calgary government funded organizations like tech connect and momentum economic development centers community futures they have funding and programs to put people through uh, business plan development, uh, market testing, A-B testing kind of things. So find those kind of resources. Don't, don't spend money for the sake of spending money. Try to save all the cash you can and get as many resources as you can. So that would be number one. Um, number two would be get some good people around you. And that would be part of you know going to these other organizations. But find some mentors. Find some advisors, someone that you can ask questions to, um, and not just family members, unless they have a lot of experience in business, for example. But you need people around you that you can talk to. And then after that, say you have a good idea, you feel like you've done some market research and there's a need for it, and um, you have a bit of a business plan, start prioritizing and living in a 90-day world What are you going to do in the next 90 days to start pushing this product or this service forward? And every 90 days for the rest of your life, have a 90 day plan. Don't have one year goals only have 90 day action items. And that will help you. That's the step-by-step we were talking about with the mountain. So you have to have some grit though. Like you can have everything in place. You can have a good idea. You can tell people about it and they're going to say, yeah, go for it. And eventually you got to pull the trigger and you got to go out there and and try and sell and, and try and market yourself. And you're going to see failure. Your first iteration probably isn't going to work. Your second one might be a little better, but it might not work. You know, take feedback, improve upon it and just stay in the fight because it is hard and you're going to get rejection 
and you're going to have to go back and rejig. Um, but in the end, you have to have that vision of where you want to go and then a strategy and an execution plan of how to do it. Don't miss the execution part. Everyone has an idea and a vision and they think it just will magically happen. Mm-hmm. No, you, you have to, you have to go after it. So to summarize, it would be find people to get around you, find the resources, try not to spend money if you don't have to. Um, and if you can, don't go in debt, like try and bootstrap it, try and sell something for some money and then sell that reinvest, sell that reinvest and slowly build up. You don't have to go in debt all the time to start a business. And a lot of people do, it can help. I'm not saying it's horrible. Um, and then, yeah, just go for it. Plan it. Just continue to do the internal auditing of yourself and your product and how you can adjust it and change. And, uh, yeah, just go for it. I love that. And uh, how very specific and how very actionable it is. And every single person can start doing that. The main characters that I would wish you to have is bravery, courage, really start doing that to really go for it and um, maybe create a game for yourself to find and to hear a hundred no to your Mm. business to your idea but then not just for the sake of hearing that no but after that no just right away i love that question a lot okay that is no what should i do differently in order that to be yes What should it be there so you will say yes to it? Let people tell you what you can adjust, what you can develop in your idea, in your business. And one more thing that I haven't tried it really, but what I've heard and what I really believe in that I believe that every single idea, every single business right now can start without any investment. How is First, to realize what problem do you want to solve. First, sell that product, sell that idea, sell that course. And only then, during the time that you have, like get some time to yourself that you first sell, you get the money. And on that money, you start to manufacture things. You start to create a course. You You start to invest. So you don't even need money to start doing things. You need to sell that idea to get money it's not all the time legal but i don't i'm not telling that you get the money and run away i am telling you right now that you get the money and you tell i will deliver it in the best way possible in one week and that is it one week 24 7 you are doing the best product you can to deliver it back can it be possible to not have any money and start a business Mm -hmm. there are plenty of success stories of people that started in their garage and there's one i listened to recently the popcorn brand boom chicka pop i think it's called okay uh they i mean they had they had a little bit of money but not a ton it's not like they needed to go get several hundred thousand dollars or a million dollars to invest in it they bought a popcorn maker a commercial popcorn machine for like i don't know ten thousand bucks and they started selling popcorn in trade shows out of their, they just made it in their garage, bagged yep. it in their garage. And they're now a multi-billion dollar popcorn business. A- Apple was in the garage. Um, Dave Ramsey, who's someone that I follow, he started on a card table in his living room, I believe. Um, lots of people started with little to nothing. Um if you really have a good idea, see if family or friends will fund you. Uh, try and try and go to investors. I mean, there's mm-hmm. angel investors, there's venture capitalists. If you really think you got a good idea, and they can they can back you up. Um, but yeah, the the idea that you have to have tens of thousands of dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars just it's not true. Mm-hmm. You can you can start a business uh, with little to nothing. I mean, if you want to manufacture airplanes, well, you might have a different problem. Yeah. Right? It, it can depend what you want to do. Yeah. You can't open a steel manufacturing plant without money. Yeah. Um, but there are different ways to get there depending on the business that you want to build. Yeah. 
And I think that if that is your first business, don't go for stone manufacturing or airplane manufacturing as a first sure. place. <laughs> You don't yeah. want to be there because it's huge competition. And again, market research that you told us about will help you realize whether that there is a place for me there or not. If you want to open a grocery store, those giants like Walmart or Safeway will eat you and you won't right. get that much money and that much joy. Again, connected with joy all the time. Otherwise, you won't enjoy the journey. Yeah, why why did you start it in the first place? It, it wasn't to hate it. Definitely. What advice you can give me right now in order to grow my business even more? Advice for yourself? Yes. To grow your life coaching business? Yes. That's a good question. Um without knowing everything about what you do, you know, short of saying, "Hey, let's have a strategy session and see if <laughs> I can help coach you." I would say go out and serve. You know, you have a solution to a problem and and find ways that you can serve people so you build by getting networks which you've done that's how we met provide some free services some pro bono stuff not to the point that you're you know putting yourself out of business but try and serve in ways that you can give back to your community so personally I've joined some committees in my community I'm not paid for but it's a way to give back a way to network um, there's things like rotary clubs um, there's nonprofits you can help but in the end you just got to serve if you have that mentality in your mind and you do a good job and show up for your clients then they'll tell other people a business like ours mm -hmm. is very relation based very trust based mm -hmm. when I did landscaping I could sell my product with a before and after picture Mm -hmm. or a promotion or a sale or a trade show booth i can't do that with coaching i have to build the trust of my community and the people that i network with and the clients that i work with so that there's chatter about me on the wind you know what are people saying about me is it good things i want a good reputation because people are you know life coaching business coaching is a good investment it's usually long term. It's something you have to be pretty vulnerable. Like you have to open up to someone Definitely. to t tell your challenges. So uh, it's it's gaining the trust of the people that are your big referral partners is a big one. Yeah. And uh, again, I want to remind every single person who are listening right now to us that um, every Thursday, every single Thursday for now, for this moment of the recording of this video, I am doing free coaching sessions, free group coaching sessions. So you don't have to be there and solve your coaching quest. You can be there and listen to other people getting the coaching session. Uh, it's absolutely amazing opportunity to get me while I am still speeding up, while, while I am still looking for clients, because as soon as I get more projects, have more clients, I won't have time for that because I already will be there at that point. So use me and use that time for uh, that I am in right now, because uh, that is a great opportunity for you to join. All the links is in the description below. First link, go there, events, register through Meetup, and I'll see you next Thursday. Why did you decide to be a life coach? I think life coaching decided me to be the one. How that happened is I joined a course with the purpose to solve my request, with the purpose to solve my challenge that I had. I was uh, learning and uh, they were still preparing us to become self-coach, to know how the br how the brain works and how to do that and uh, what will be there that you can help clients with as well. But I, at that point, I didn't think that I will be a coach. I didn't believe that anyone will listen to me. I didn't believe that anyone will come to me and say all their struggles and problems and really execute what I am telling them to do. But then we had group sessions and I had a moment when I was a coach and one of my colleague who was at the same course he had a challenge in his life i really don't remember what was the challenge about but i really need to find it because that is a story that i keep telling every time and i don't remember what was the challenge but it was a 
session like with you and me right now. We were in Zoom and I was getting into it. And at one point I started realizing that can sounds like woo-woo stuff. They can sound like very creepy and you don't understand what I'm talking about. But I really felt the flow through me. So I really, I didn't think about the questions. I didn't know what next question will be. I wasn't into, oh my goodness, what I need to ask him in order to serve him the best, what I need to ask him in order to get the shift in his mindset. I was just listening to him. I was just present. There was no time, no effort, no ego, nothing happened. So I lost track of time at all. I lost track of where am I? I didn't know what is happening, but I was just being there. And every time he stops talking, I knew what next question will be. I just knew where to lead them next, what to ask him next in order to perform the best, the best transformation in the life of his. And at that moment, I just realized that that is mine, that I think I found what is mine. I think I found that that is what I got to do, even if that definitely will be ups and downs all the time. We all have ups and downs, but I think I find what I want to do. People told me during that session how great it was and how amazing it was, and they even applauded me because of that session. They were, oh my goodness, Alona, how did you do that? And there's like, I don't know. I don't know. So at that moment, I just knew that it's kind of coaching chose me to be came the one. Natu- came naturally to you. Yes. And I was all the time thinking, what is my thing? What do I want to do in life? What is my passion? What is my purpose in life? But that was the first moment. There were several more moments when, like after this moment, it was very big gap between the second moment. It was very long time when I didn't feel any flaw during sessions. I was feeling, oh my goodness, what I need to ask that. But then I again came to that very point when I realized, oh my goodness, really, I know that that is happening. And then clients start to appear, projects start happening in my life and um, YouTube channel and all the subscribers and all the audience that see me doing that with no effort. So when I talk with you right now, when I talk with my clients, I am not tired I am not exhausted. I can do it limitless amount of time. I can do it for free. I can do it forever, I think. And they will never be tired. I think these are main criteria for you to realize if that is yours or not. If you're really that excited about what you are doing, if you can't do it for free, if you can do it just because you love do it, just because you cannot not do that, just go for it and create a business and forget about the competition. Be your own expert, be your own proof that you can do that. And mm-hmm. in a nutshell, the answer is the coaching found me. The coaching led me to that realization that, girl, that is what you do. I don't care what you think about it. That is what you do. <laughs> awesome. Good for you. And I know that people see that influence people see that transformation and difference in their lives and i know that that is just about to begin where people can find you what you do right now that people can join you and maybe test you maybe use your time use you get familiarize with you even more if there are some entrepreneurs or there are some people who are just about to build their business um where can they find you what you can help them with Thank you for asking. I have a website, nielsencoaching.com. Most of my content is on there. I do business coaching, as we've discussed. I'm also an extended disc facilitator, so I can provide assessments and training on personality and behavior styles for teams and leaders. I have two courses right now. One's called the Take Control of Your Business course, and one's an Emerging Leaders program. Um, The Take Control of Your Business course is good for someone that could be in the early stages of their business and want to build some systems and operations to 
create a machine, but you don't have to have a new business for that to be effective. I want you to be able to go on vacation for a couple of weeks and your business can, can still operate. So I offer those. But one thing that's really easy for people to participate in and is actually very valuable is my monthly book summary. So every month I, I do a business book. The next one is, where am I pointing? Traction and the five dysfunctions of a team. So I'm, I do a business book every month and it's for one hour. It's only 10 bucks and you get the PDF book summary. And then we meet online for 60 minutes and, and go over it. So if, if you're a busy business owner and you want to stay educated, but you don't want to spend four to eight hours reading a book, let me read it for you. That's the idea. I give you the main points and then we talk about it and you can implement that in your business. So those are great. And that's on my website if you want to register. But otherwise, I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram under either Cody Nielsen or Nielsen Coaching. Love to connect with whoever wants to. We will definitely have all the links in the description below. So please go and reach out to Cody if you want to reach out to me if you want to. And again, inviting you for those sessions because I know that they won't last a lot. Those group sessions because I know like last session was a meeting and the person told me, I don't know, I really can't believe that you do it for free right now. I've mm -hmm. been through so many coaching sessions. I've been through so many counseling sessions, but you are one of the best and you are doing it for free. I don't understand why. <laughs> I was just like, I don't understand why, why, why people don't understand it as well. And they don't come with <laughs> why they're not here still. But I really hope that you will join us. It is free. It is for everyone completely, no matter what age, what stage, whether you are a business owner, YouTuber, anyone at all um doesn't matter and um yeah i was just so happy to be here to have that conversation with you thank you so so much for joining thank you so much for uh, being that open transparent and generous with our audience with your life hacks with your tricks with your tips to to, to really start their business and leave the life they want with the business they want with the things they want to do and um, get in touch with you if, if they need help. Thank you for inviting me. It was awesome. Perfect. Thank you so much. All right. Have a wonderful day and join us for those sessions. They are absolutely amazing. And watch our next video that you will get right now in the screen. Have a nice one. Bye-bye.